Усім доброго дня. Я Hello, everybody. I do hope you hear me and see me. I welcome you. My name is Katerina Odut. If you don't know me, I'm the head of MRM company. So I'd like to welcome all of the participants here and all of my colleagues from MRM and the team of TCA. And I welcome and congratulate you with the second stage of the season four of PGA competition. I do remind you that this competition was done with the support of the project Transformation Communications Activities, which is funded by the United States AID. So all of the presentees today here, people, our guests in the webinar are definitely representing the products which uh, didn't uh, let our experts be indifferent and you achieved the next stages of our competition. We congratulate you with that and of course you get the chance to get to the finals and even the win the project. So altogether, we selected 65 projects out of more than 190 applications. In a bit of the nutshell about this second stage, its aim, first of all, it is created to work on and improve your projects for them to be correspondent to the aims and topics of the competition. And of course, to help you prepare your projects and to help you achieve the final stage for your projects to be implemented and achieve their goal, that is the viewer, the bigger screens, the TV screens and the cinemas. So this stage consists of two parts. This is the open pitching, which will last till the 18th of February and the doctoring workshop, which will take place uh, during the first days of March. As for more details about the second part of the stage, you will get the necessary guidelines uh, in the, your emails a bit later. And also you should have gotten the guidelines for your personal emails about the terms of reference about the pitching, which you need to provide us with uh, in the video format up till the 18th. Please, if you haven't got these emails, they are very important. Please make us aware here, either in chat or anywhere else. We'll get in touch with you separately and provide you all the necessary info. As for the today's event, it is organized for you to really prepare your pitches in the best way possible according to those guidelines to impress our experts, of course. So the today's event will be consisting of two parts. The first is the workshop itself from our Hollywood experts. The second part is the Q&A session during which you will be able to pose any question which you need either in the video format or here in the chat. Please send your questions during the workshop as well. We'll definitely read them out loud when it is time. You can write in any language, English or Ukrainian. We have simultaneous interpretation working. By the way, please make sure that in the settings in Zoom, you've used the button of globe so you can choose the language which is convenient for you, English or Ukrainian, or just without interpretation original. And now I'm giving the floor to my colleagues from TCA, Alexander Klemanov, the head of TV and cinema department at TCA. Alex, please. Thank you, Katerina. Hello, everybody. I welcome all of you who joined our today's Zoom meeting. I welcome you here and congratulate you because you've achieved the next stage. Your project have achieved the next stage of the competition. So we decided, well, you know, it was never informed before. We decided to organize this workshop, understanding that we need to explain how you need to prepare your video pictures in the best way possible. We are sure that you'll have certain questions. Though we already encouraged you to watch the recordings of the last year workshop, how you should prepare the pitch in the best way possible, you can find this recording at our YouTube channel. We still understood that because of the changes in the rules of the contest this year, because of a bit of a different timeline, because of a different requirements, you will have certain questions. That is why it is worth making one more workshop for you to prepare in the best way possible. I 
really ask you, please use this opportunity of a workshop with the use for yourselves. And you have time for questions. So please pose your questions about your preparedness. Do not ask how the projects are selected into the shortlist. Please don't do that. As the answer is obvious. Everybody got it already. The projects had to be correspondent to the criteria which were listed in the RFA. They needed to be correspondent to the topics. They should explain them precisely and in a proper comprehensible way. The applicants should have demonstrated their experience, which should be sufficient to implement the project and to show that they are able to make this project real efficiently and reach the target audience. Those were the criteria of selection or choice. And now I'd like to introduce, and I think that lots of you already know our experts, that is Adam Siegel and Josh Weinstock, Hollywood producers who are working with the competition of PGA since the very beginning for several years. And they really understand the Ukrainian reality very well, which complications you face as the crews preparing your presentations and then preparing your projects. That is why Adam and Josh are able to answer any of your questions in the best way possible, especially considering that further on they will be in the expert panel, which will consider your further applications. So please, I give the floor to Adam and Josh. The floor is yours. Thanks, Alex. Hi, Josh. Hey, Adam. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday to you and to everyone there. Um, so uh, I thought I'd start out first doing something we don't normally do, but I would like to just, and I know, Josh, you feel this too, uh, congratulate and really um, it, you know, applaud the incredible work that the teams at TCA and at UCBI and at MRM have done for the many years that Pitchua has been going on. And this year is no different. In fact, it might even be harder uh, because of all the other issues going on. So I really, I know we both are so thrilled to be part of this program and we see all the, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to make this happen. So uh, thank you um, to our, our team who, who, who worked so hard to make and to do Pitch UA. Um, and congratulations to those who have been accepted um, for the shortlist, who've made it to the phase two. Um, and I know, you know, I've been doing this a bit longer than Josh, but Josh, I think you've seen it too. It, you know, every year we're seeing more and more projects. Um, and we're seeing better projects and the the types of work that's coming out of Ukraine. Um, uh, there are so many exceptional uh, series and films, um, and we've just been just really impressed and very proud of so many of the projects that we've been able to work with. And we've been able to work with a number of people who are still involved and are going to hopefully come back and we'll, we'll do some more. And it's for me just a, a pleasure. Um, so just to start that off with everyone. Um, thank you for working so hard and um, making this just a, a really um, incredible experience for us, you know, as, as the consultants and, and mentors. Yeah, I, th I think you put that as well as you possibly can. And congrats to everyone. And we're excited about this upcoming Pitch UA4 and look forward to jumping into this. Um, as Alex, said uh we did a extensive uh master class last year um that you can find on youtube that really goes into really great date depth and detail in terms of like really what the expectations should be going into uh pitch ua um right and it really sort of lays out uh, the different approaches and, and the do's and don'ts uh, towards, you know, both the pitching and then the mentoring. So, you know, rather than sort of repeat ourselves and, and bore you to death, um, Adam and I thought it would be good to sort of use past examples uh, uh, from, from the last couple pitch UAs to sort of point out what made these projects stand out uh, ahead of the um, 
uh, the, the mentoring program. Uh, that's great. And the, the video is called Perfecting Your Pitch. We're calling this one Perfecting Your Pitch Lessons Learned. Uh, to separate them, but um, it, it, it's a really good, we think it's a really good um, thing to look at. It goes into that detail. Um, so I think it'll be really helpful to take a look at that. Um, so with that, why don't we get started? Um, we're gonna, we're gonna um, you may or may not have seen these projects. Um, they've all been released in, I think, yes. Uh, the one just recently, actually just a week ago. Um, so what we'll do is we'll run just a little trailer so you see what the project is. And then we're gonna talk about, you know, what the pitch was like and, and give you sort of what are, are uh, the best, uh, sort of what we, learned, what we learned from watching it or what I think you can learn from, from how they succeeded. Um, the first one we're gonna be looking at is, and there will be humans, uh, which is a series that came out a few years ago. Uh, will you run that? There you go. Давно это было. Любив її. Вот це дивлюсь на тебе, а бачу її. Дуже ти на неї схожа. Не мовчи, Господи. Направ мене допоможи знайти свою стежку, прошу. Подай хоч якийсь знак. Ти Таня, так? Я тебе пам'ятаю, тільки ти трохи менша була. Вже й погуляти ні з ким не можна. Гуляй! Але з тими, хто Бога шанує, але Хмарославський, тобі не пара. Я люблю тебе. Хочу одружитися з тобою. Однині Україна стає українською народною республікою. Життя міняється. Прийшла нова політика. Я йду на війну. Прийміть від мене цей скромний подарунок. Гарне ваше на мисто. Тільки відчуваю не для мене. Батько, може краще здатися. Але жити. Ніхто з них жити тобі не дасть. Від нової совєтської власті. Я хочу передати вам великий і гарячий прів'ят. Що сталося з моєю матір'ю? І чого ти стільки років це від мене приховував? Це війна. Тут не вийде бути святим. Для гладики. Я вашу волю виконую, так. Жінка моя народжує. Вже води відійшли. Треба швидко. І сім'ю я хотіла, і дітей. Але чому жінка завжди повинна собою жертвувати? Скільки ж гріха в тобі! Якби ж мені хоч слово ніж не сказала. Розумієш, хоч слово! Скажи, а ти щаслив? А ти? Живи так, щоб не вклонятися нікому, крім Бога. І будуть люди. З 14 вересня у 23 15. Я. So that um um that project uh was pitched to us, I think it was the second pitch UA. Um and it represented obviously um an historical series. Um so what right up front, which became a question, and it was probably one of the biggest challenge that uh, the team had in order to sell their pitch, in order to for us to take it, was it was historical. <laughs> That's what it is. It's based on this great book that was very, very well known. Um, but it was a question about, this is 100 years ago. How is this relevant to what's going on in Ukraine now? How is it relevant to the themes that we're talking about now? So what um, th that was definitely the most sort of important and, and quite frankly, the issue that we talked about a lot and something that they had to really work very hard, particularly when they came back for the second pitch to, to articulate how this would work. And, and ultimately, when we, when we took the project, we found a bunch of other ways of, of dealing with it. 
but it's it's something to, to recognize when you're doing an historical pitch about it or a show that may be in history is really find the, it doesn't have to be a direct relationship to what's going on, but it's about echoes. It's about themes. It's about certain ideas. Certainly this moment in history when Ukrainians resisted this um, offensive, I mean, Clearly, this is something that's very relevant to what, what's going on in Ukraine today. Um, so through and, and as well as a number of other issues that were kind of, you know, layered throughout of it, throughout it. So it really it, it, it really was something that we had to, you know, it had to be carefully thought about and, ex, and expressed in the pitch. What was very beneficial was that it was this book. So it was uh, in and, you know, as Josh, you'll agree, right, like with anything in Hollywood, it's about IP having intellectual property, having an existing book that people know is very appealing for us because obviously it's something that people will, will come to and be interested in seeing how it was adapted for the screen. So this is definitely um, a plus. If, if, you're if you're developing something based on a book, we really like it. But I think at the end of the day, what really sold this pitch was the caliber of the team. As you can see there, they are incredible filmmakers and the writing was exceptional. Um, and so when we were inter interacting with them and the way they were talking about it, when we saw their resumes, when we saw their previous work, we knew we were dealing with very a very high quality production. And that is something you definitely want to showcase. And if you're newer and you're coming into it, that's fine. You're going to showcase what you have. But obviously there are some teams who may have that ability and that that experience and that advantage, that's definitely something, you know, you want to highlight. And we're, you know, we are balancing it this year so that, you know, certain teams who have a lot of experience or certain studios will only have an option for one project. So that gives room for other projects from other companies. So we're, we're definitely keeping a mind to that. But if you've got all that incredible talent, please let us know. Don't hide it. Um, yeah. We want to see it for the pitch. Yeah, no, I, and and to yeah to to reemphasize, Adam, like s sell your assets, right? Like like you know, like don't don't be humble, don't hide behind what you have. You know, really use that as sort of advertisement for why you feel like this project is not just you know important to you, but will also be executed at a very high level. Um, so uh, and and you know, make that clear in your pitch, like. If, if you have a director, if you have an actor attached, if you have, you know, a great VFX company attached, like inc yeah. include that in there because these are all important elements that, that will help prop up your project. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. The, the next project, uh, which we have talked a few times about uh, over the course of the year is, yeah. uh, a limited series, uh, well, I guess it's it's a show called Mama uh, that premiered last February and was a huge hit for the channel. And and uh, the uh, filmmaking team has had the pleasure of traveling abroad to um, showcase the the show at different international festivals uh, and has you know garnered. Uh, publicity outside of Ukraine. So uh, everyone's been really happy with it. And uh, just as a promotion, the second season will be coming out uh, later this month. Um, so uh, this is this is a show that has had a great track record since since working with it. Um, if you want to show the trailer it's, again, it's called Mama. Мама! Звонила, 
Федерации Украинская премьера на СТБ. Thank you. Um, one, of the, one of the first things that sort of caught everyone's attention um, was the fact that this was sort of inspired by a personal story related to one of the producers. Um, uh, it was based sort of on a friend of hers who sort of experienced a similar situation as, as you just saw in, in the trailer. So immediately, sort of like what Adam said about being inspired by a book, you know, in this case, this was inspired by a personal story, which helped sort of immediately say, all right, there, there's a sense of passion here. There's a sense of authenticity here. Um, obviously, uh, the show itself wasn't literally based on the story, but it provided sort of a, a launching point, a foundation for sort of the creative team to sort of build upon. Um, and there, there was a, you know, a really strong sort of sense of enthusiasm uh, uh, during the pitch. And, and you could really sort of get this from, from the team. Um, one of the things that also uh, really sort of struck a chord for us was that there were these sort of big thematic ideas, right? Just even, the idea of the title, right? Mama, like the idea of, of a woman who has to go into enemy territory to really help not just find her son, but also be a mama to everyone, right? So like there was a sort of idea of, of unity and sort of the simplicity of uh, the stakes of a, of, a, of a mother trying to find her, her lost child. So these were things that could easily be grasped and also could be pitched very quickly, right? So it didn't require sort of this extensive discussion about like, what are we trying to pull out of here? It was, it was very clear from, from the start. Um, and, you know, even, you know, later on the, the, you know, the story itself wasn't really that defined yet. It, it took a couple <laughs> of sessions before we really sort of pulled out what the structure was and sort of what the, the core story was. But again, sort of the grand uh, big ideas, big themes, big stakes were all very, very clear from, from the get-go. So it's really important during these pitches that you sort of lay that out very simply for us. Um, and then the other thing that was um, really helpful was that, you know, oftentimes, you know, you you get pitches and and sometimes uh, there's almost like too too much ambition in terms of like what it wants to be in terms of identity and, and genre. Like sometimes, you know, a lot of times you get projects that want to have both drama and comedy, right? Which which are great, you know, are, are some of the best shows, but they're also very difficult to execute. Uh, in the case of Mama, it was very clear what the show was. The show was always going to be a drama that that explored sort of the the harsh realities of of war. Um, so for us, and I know Adam, you agree with it, um, is that identity matters, right? Mm -hmm. Make it very clear to us from the start what the genre of your either your movie, your digital show is, your series because uh, that will help sort of set the tone moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, I mean, it's true for any projects that Josh and I are doing in, in Los Angeles. That's the first question. What is this? You know, um, and they, they need to know it's, it's how we speak. So it's very important to make that point. The other point I just want to reiterate, Josh, is, um, you know, the, 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 it's part of the reason why I want to do this, this program with USAID. Um, and I think you do as well, is we are looking for authenticity. We want to hear your voices. This is the un undeniable un number one requirement. We really are looking for passion. We're looking for uh, real these, these local stories that are meaningful. And what we'll do when we work with you is uh, add elements or help identify universal themes and, and how to make it really sort of reach larger audiences if, if, it, if you need that. Um, but we, but the most important thing in that pitch, and that's what you said, was you, you express the passion and you express where this is coming from, the story, <clears throat> the, the individual, authentic, real experience that it is connected to. And that's something we're looking for. So I, I can't emphasize that enough. 
Um, great. Let's move to the next one. The next one is uh, borscht, um, a secret ingredient. Um, <clears throat> and this show was, uh, I mean, this actually is sort of interesting. It's part of the issues around the pitch and, and the project. But uh, this appeared as part of a segment on a morning show. Um, it also was a feature film and also appeared as a, as a web series um, and has done extremely well. We've, they've taken it to other places. It, it appeared in France as part of a, 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 a bunch of other Ukrainian films last year and was just wildly popular. Um, and we'll just take a look at the trailer for Borscht, please. Це справжня історія смаку та любові. Кілометри доріг, гектари полів та лісів, високі гори і солоні моря. Швидкі річки та спокій озера, великі міста і старі сел. І найголовніше, неймовірні люди і їхні цінності. Це історія про нашу країну, про її традиції та нові сенси. Це історія про борщ, що єднає. So, um, so this project, um, and it was very vivid. I remember when, when it was first pitched, um, it was brought by a very competent and experienced producer um, who demonstrated incredible skill um, from, and just professionalism, just the, from the minute we met her and, and saw her, um, she had it down. That is it just your whole presentation. I mean, having that competency is really important. Um, and the other thing about it was um, the elegance of this idea. Um, it was very simple. It's about borscht, this incredible soup that is so uh, is is identified with Ukraine. And what the way the pitch uh, sort of worked was, you have this really simple, you know, elegant idea. But the, you start talking about it and then all the possibilities opened up and all the potential of it began to open up. And, and um, now, you know, this was a project though that while immediately we felt, wow, this is really strong, it couldn't find a home. Um, and there were a number of complications that we ran into um, around that. Um, it, it, the other thing about it that was really, and this is particularly true um, with any unscripted uh, show is you have to have your character. You have to have your host. Here we have a celebrity chef um, who is very telegenic. He's very appealing. He's great on TV. He can relate and people want to watch him. So this is really important to have um, because you don't necessarily have actors, right? You, you've got to really rely on, on the real people you're, you're working with. Um, so those were sort of the key aspects that made us really like it. Um, yet there were problems. The problem primarily was the fact that where will, where will the show go? How will it exist? Um, they were talking about it as a film initially, but it really felt like a, a series. So one of the great, and this is something that we're gonna be looking at particularly in between you know, the initial pitch and the mentoring, and then what happens in the final pitch is the flexibility of the participants. Um, we're, that is very appealing from, from our point of view because we recognize that this is, you know, something that you care about that's very strong uh, and you, you have, you're devoted to, that at the same time, you recognize that, like with anything, it, it, it has to work with whatever constraints you have. Um, we had a number of other constraints with this, which had nothing to do with the content. It had to do with, you know, 
this chef was known on a particular channel and it wasn't going to be able to work on another channel and yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of structural issues that were associated with it. So we, we were able to work with the producer to find the solutions and that flexibility was really important and we really appreciate it. So know that that's something we're gonna be evaluating you on. Um, and again, that's, that's not just your initial pitch, that's later on, but even when you initially pitch it, we're really seeing you, we're seeing you as a person. And one of the great things about this project was it really was our producer. She, this was her passion project and we saw it, we felt it. So um, you're pitching yourself in this, in, in, as part of it. And that's just something to really keep in mind um, throughout the process. You know, we're looking at you and, and we really wanna see you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, again, it just boils back to enthusiasm, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, that, that, that is applicable, universal, whether it's in Ukraine or in Los Angeles, is if you're not passionate about it, no one else will be passionate about it. <laughs> That's uh, we've, right. We, we've said this multiple times over Zoom, um, mm. and we'll continue to say that over and over <laughs> again, but uh it, it, it is truly probably the most important piece, especially pitching, is that you have to convey your excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, all right. The next project we're going to talk about is a feature film that happened to just come out this past weekend and was actually the number one film in all of Ukraine. So that is a, a big win. Um, it's called uh, Best Weekend, and uh, I suggest everyone on this uh, channel right now to go out and go see it. It's a lot of fun, and, and especially in, a, in, in sort of these darker times, uh, if you need a good laugh, this movie has that. Привет, Ольга. Різні люди їдуть до Києва. І у кожного свої плани на вихідні. То ти мене знаєш? Мені ж близькі друзі в Інстаграм. Mm -hmm. Ти лайкнула мій коментар. А ось поставила mm -hmm. вогник. Яка пристрасна переписка. Києві Мутін, тільки з чистокровними киянками. Ясно? Ясно. Дівушка, може поплаваємо? Ви з Києва? З Вінниці. Сорян, мероприятие тільки для місцевих. Самозванки, ідіть у свій фастю. Київ не резиновий. Але насправді в Києві, як і в будь-якому місті світу, Люди шукають любов. Ти шукаєш квиток, а я якраз шукаю дівчину. У мене теж є дівчина. Та ладно! Скоро півроку. Скоро? Півроку це як, це як мої дід з бабою. Я сказала, що вони є. що Альона викрила дитину. Так і є. Ви моя улюблена співачка. Ви моя улюблена співачка. Дякую. Я хочу бути тут, з тобою. Я люблю тебе. Це любов. І отаке лице хтиве зроби. Ага. Так приємно пахнеш. Ну, це пиво. Дякую. Так, так, для тих, хто, можливо, не супер знайомий, Uh, the movie is based on an annual music festival that's held in Kyiv every year called Atlas Weekend. Um, and that uh, was one of the immediate things that, again, sort of jumped out with us with the initial pitch, right? They, they didn't hide what it was. They, in fact, used that as sort of the driving force for what the movie could be. So they used this sort of pre-established brand uh, to sort of say, all right, we're going to use this festival as sort of a launching point for an ensemble comedy where you have different groups of people all 
gathering in Kyiv for the weekend. And the centerpiece being ultimately the festival that sort of brings everything together. So there's sort of this metaphorical theme to it of, of again, sort of unity uh, that, that was really clear. But one of the things um, that uh, the team did such a good job in their in their sort of visual pitch was that they use these um, really extensive uh, visual presentations in terms of like the different elements involved, right? They, they had sort of this really clear vision for what the project was, which included, uh, you know, famous mu Ukrainian musicians that uh, they had already gathered on board to, to help not just be in the film, but later on to partake in sort of the promotion of the film. So there sort of was this multi-tier uh, sort of um, uh, strategy that was sort of presented for, to us very early on uh, in terms of like, not only how they were gonna put together the film creatively, but also how they were gonna promote the film in the long run. And that to us was, was not just unique, but it was also really uh, smart because again, it was sort of taking these established brands, again, using sort of what Adam said with there will be humans is that in that case, that was based on a book. In this case, we are going to use the entertainment assets at our disposal, which in this case for these famous musicians and actors and stuff like that and throw them in this film. So, so there, there is this sort of foundation being built from the start that helped sort of define what the project was. Um, and, and again, what's important about branding is that immediately your audience recognizes these different elements that are involved. And, and that's, that's really important in, in, in terms of uh, sort of launching something. Um, the other, the other, uh, even though at the time we hadn't read the script, um, the again in the presentation, one of the things that that really stood out was was that they really emphasized that they wanted all these different set pieces built around the city itself, right? Using sort of the iconic landmarks and locations throughout the city to sort of help promote this sort of fun comedy. Uh, which again, uh, for us was sort of a, a, a great thing that we were able to immediately chew on and, and sort of be able to say, all right, this, uh, this feels commercial, right? This feels like it has the ability to sort of break out beyond just a small demographic. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, like we've talked about with, with the previous projects, you know, they were very clear from the start in terms of their themes and their characters uh, and, and sort of the, um, the idea of how they wanted to sort of overlap these different storylines with each other. Again, like we didn't have the details to that, but they, they were able to sort of uh, articulate it in sort of a, a macro sense that we immediately got it from, from, from the, the, the time we heard the pitch. Yeah, I mean, I remember the pitch as well. And I, um, the, it, it, I mean, we talked about this, Josh, that it's, you know, in a lot of ways, it felt like what the kind of pitches we hear in Hollywood. Um, they're very driven by uh, these attachments, these assets or, or elements. And um, really, and this is, this is why we're talking about it here. Um, this is a good thing. We are definitely looking for this, these types of elements because this is what helps sell a, a project. Um, and it also gives... Um, a better understanding of really what what you're doing. Um, it, it gives a lot more clarity around it because we we understand we understand perhaps the challenges that are also involved. This is a, a live music festival. It's at a certain time of the year. You know, this was all done right just prior to COVID, so uh, there were a lot of questions around that. So you all had to work through that. But that but understanding the elements are really part of telling the story of of what the project is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, wonderful. All right. Um, all right. So the, for the last one, we're going to uh, showcase uh, a digital project um, and we which we are absolutely very much um, um, about and recognize. And um, this one uh, was called Better at Home and we'll show a little compilation, I think, and then we'll give you give a sense of it. It's on YouTube still. So you can check it out there. Um, why don't we run that? Привет! 
Я Женя Синельников, профессиональный путешественник. Я побывал более чем в 110 странах, а еще посетил все областные центры Украины. Ого! Вау! Красиво! Очень круто! И знаете что? Мне захотелось ехать по нашей стране и дальше. Потому что в гостях хорошо, а дома лучше. Um, so we're, we want to talk about this project because um, it perfectly captures the elements we want to hear in particular for digital projects. Um, what um, um, Eugenie there, who's our host, um, who is very funny, um, we get him, he, he, when we're looking at digital projects, quite frankly, we're looking at your followers. Um, this was an established team. They had already done an ex exceptionally successful series. Um, so <clears throat> quite frankly, when they were pitching this project to us, we were, they were really pitching almost their audience. Um, when you're, when you're coming at it from that point of view, that's actually a very important aspect. If not an audience you already have, um, we want to hear what audience you're looking for. Um, that's a, a very valuable part of this pitch. It says a couple things. A, are these the people that we're trying to connect to? But B, do you know <laughs> who your audience is? And with any kind of digital project, that's essential. It's, it's very much around that. So we knew we'd be building off this existing audience. Um, we, the, the, it was fun. Um, the comedy was, was, was there. And we also... And I was particularly impressed with the, the depth of understanding that they talked about in terms of getting, working with the followers, building the, the, the following. Because quite frankly, with digital projects, it's not just the competency of making them, which is hard enough. It's actually understanding the ecosystem of social media and how all of that's all going to work together to bring your audience there. Um, they, those might be, if not equally important, in some ways, understanding the world around it is maybe even more important than just what you can do in terms of the videos that you're making. So um, that, when you're talking about digital projects, we are very like locked in on those aspects about your understanding of building these communities and working with them. Um, obviously, it's essential you have a known influencer or, uh, or at least uh, properties or shows or series that are already there. It's very hard to build from nothing. So, um, and this is something we, we're always gonna be looking at. So uh, this team just did a great job at, at, at giving us uh, those aspects right up front. And that, that makes it easier for us to, to recognize which ones we, we can go with. Yeah, and, and I, I think, particularly with the digital stuff like you know when you're putting together these pitches as as you're you know preparing you know primarily for the creative like it is important to include your strategy in terms of rollout right and yeah. as adam said it's it's very very difficult to just throw something completely original on youtube and then expect to attract a major audience right so we want to hear sort of insight into how you're thinking that this idea of yours will reach an audience, right? And how, how you plan on helping sort of roll it out through digital and social media platforms. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So um, will our team, we have a, a short deck, we're gonna just do a quick highlights of what we just talked about. So um, you have something to write down. Um, can you, do you have, our presentation, there we go. Um, so here we go. This is perfect pitch lessons <laughs> from Pitch UA. Um, and we start with this quote by one of the greatest entertainers of all time, Albert Einstein. Uh, he really, you know, he made us laugh, he made us cry. Um, anyway, Albert Einstein famously said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. I think nothing is more appropriate in, in about a pitch than that statement. Um, it's about the simplicity. 
It's about the clarity. And when you're practicing and when you're getting ready, if it's not simple, you need to understand it better. And I think that just is absolutely it. Do you want to do the next? We'll go to the next slide. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So this is where um, you can whip out your uh, your pencil and paper. Yeah. And take all this critical information we're about to recap. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and and there we, we we sort of did it based. I mean, uh, not. Um, we should say that these aren't necessarily just to these particular projects. We're just highlighting them. It's not necessarily associated with any one. A lot of the projects had all of these elements, quite frankly. Um, so it it obviously number one, your confidence is incredibly important. Um, and the second we see you in terms of you know you know when we were doing it live on stage, but even in these videos, we've got to see that capability. Um, that confidence in what you're doing um, and that you really, you, you have a very strong grasp of this. Like you are, you are in charge. Um, you're not hesitant. You're not, you're not unsure. That's a really important thing in a pitch. Um, this is any kind of pitch, but, but particularly one involving media um, because there are so many different moving parts to it. Uh, we need to know at the center it's, it's right there. Um. And as, as we talked about, in, in some ways, probably the number one thing is, is your passion and your authenticity. Um, you know, why is this project important to you? Make sure you convey your enthusiasm and, and you know, sort of uh, make it very clear to us that you cannot wait to dive into this project. Um, yes, and um, the passion completely comes off. So there you go. And, um, um, and the next point, obviously, is flexibility and responsiveness. Um, like I said, this is going to be something that we'll, we'll get a sense of when we first hear your pitch, but it's really going to be clear in the next stages, in the mentoring, and then what you do, how you adapt and take in that information. We're really looking for that. Um, it's it's, I mean, quite frankly, anytime you're working for a channel or a studio or, you know, those people who are financing this, they're looking for that too. Um, that said, we're not looking to, to, we want you to be you. We, 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 that's why we've chosen you. Um, what we're looking for is ways and how you work. And, and that flexibility and responsiveness is really important because as is in the case with Borsch, it, what, what we initially wanted to do may not have been possible. So we had to find other ways. And um, having this very, you know, established and experienced producer, she knew that's how you're going to have, we're going to have to figure out how to do this. And we worked through it. And so, so, because we're, we're not just looking at the creative aspect in this case, it's the practical aspects. Once you, you know, you created this great thing, but now you run into a problem down the line. If you're flexible and responsive, we can, adjust it and do what we have to do so we get the project out and it be, it's, it's as successful as it can be. Uh, showcase all your elements. So as we talked about, if you have a book, an article, you know, if it's based on uh, some true event or a film, uh, a music festival, right. uh, if you have a director, if you have, you know, your writers, your producers, you know, uh, your post team, you know, we want to hear all about who's involved with the project and then not just who's involved with it, you know, really talk about, you know, why this person is such an important fit to the project. Why is that director chosen for this project, you know, and, and, and why is he the right person for the project? So um, make sure to, you know, again, don't hide behind these elements, put them forward spotlight them and 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 really sell them to us uh as a team absolutely um and last but absolutely not least know your audience um we say this again and again and again who is this for um because that's what the channel is going to ask you um it's we it it in, in, I say, in some cases what we're actually looking at is the audience that's what you're pitching so um just make sure it's it's in that pitch, and we understand um, we understand that you understand, you know, uh, what this is and and who you're speaking to because it's just incredibly important. 
Um, and that's it. Those are our takeaways. So with that, let's open up the, um, the floor, as it were, uh, to questions. Uh, thank you, Josh and Adam. I will be speaking Ukrainian now. So uh, this is the end of uh, the first block of our workshop. So please, now we are open for your questions. The first question can be seen in the chat, so I'll definitely read it out loud. The question is from Anna Nestor about the project Resurrection 40 Days of Love. Either this or that name. So the question is the following. The document's format for pitching usually is concentrated on the plot and protagonists. But we understand that in our project, the main, the real volume of the story is open through the images and stories of the lesser characters or supporting characters, and they are very numerous. Each of them have their own story, which we plan to reveal in our show. This is our tool of opening the story. How we should announce that? How can we include those peculiarities into the presentation, which is making our application very formalized? The end of quote. Um, shall I take that one? I'll take that one, Josh. Yeah. Um, this is, um, well, you're hitting on our, our, our Einstein quote, um, the simplicity. And it sounds like you do have an understanding of what your project is. Um, so in this particular case, um, when you're dealing with, let's say, you know, an ensemble, I mean, the weekend a little bit is that way, right? The great weekend is, has a lot of different characters. Uh, focus on one. You can't focus, or maybe two, but uh, pick a couple that you feel are representative. And you can explain that we have many characters, here are two kind of thing, because um, you're never going to be able to do all of them. Um, I would caution you, and we, this would be something we'll talk about in mentoring. I don't know who you'll, you'll have, but, um, you know, you, don't forget, it, you know, the structures are about the protagonists. So there can be sometimes a fascination with some subplots and sub characters. They should all be feeding back to your protagonist. So I think it's also important to recognize what is, how does this reflect back to the protagonist? And I don't know the project and we haven't looked at anything yet. Um, so, I mean, Liz, Josh and I have it. So the other uh, committee that, that looked at it is, is, is different. So we, uh, we'll be looking at that. That would be something to, to make the point of. So find one, maybe two examples that are very strong that you feel kind of best represent. Um, and like I said, make, don't forget the protagonist. I mean, it's, it's, even if you feel like somehow it's, they're less important, it, they are important. Yeah. And, and I mean, even, even an ensemble always has a central protagonist, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's, if you can't sell us on your protagonist, then it's going to be hard to get fully invested in the project, right? Because yeah. they are the ones that are guiding us on the journey. And as Adam said, sort of your, your supporting cast ultimately are supporting the journey of your protagonist in some way. So it, it's, it's really important that well, I understand your question and I understand some of your concerns, you know, I, I, it's really important that you do spotlight sort of who are these anchor characters that are going to be the foundation of whether it's your film or your TV show or your, yeah. your theories, you know, we need to know that that has to be really clear. Okay, thank you for your answer. Dear colleagues, do you have any other questions left? You can write them or you can speak out loud and raise your hand. Or maybe you would like just to communicate with our expert colleagues. I've got a question. Oh, Alex, here's ah. here's a participant. Ale uh, I have Mr. a question Alex. for you. Um, well, as you know, from previous pitches, there are many teams who make, well, we only had video pitches a couple of years because before they were live in, a, in an actual yeah. room. But even when people were submitting video pitches, some were making them, were trying to make them very creative and sometimes even complicated. They would use a PowerPoint with like many slides, a lot of text, uh, while others would make them simple would just straightforward tell to the screen, to the camera, their idea, but in a very constructive way. 
what is your advice? How complicated should people be in, in their presentations? How creative does the creativity get in the way of um, relaying the main idea? What's your advice? Uh, you want me to take this, Adam? You start. I'll I'll finish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I I think for any pitch, given that you have like a limited amount of time to sort of present your story, right? You always want to go for simplicity first, right? Like the wh whether you're James Cameron or Quentin Tarantino or Adam Siegel, you know, we're all looking for the exact same thing. It's like, what is, what is the simple idea, right? And, and, and oftentimes if you try and put together too complicated of a presentation in terms of visual props and things like that, it, it often gets lost. The, the, the messaging gets lost and the story gets lost. Um, so for me, I, I prefer simplicity. I, I just want to hear what the big sort of core selling points are of the story, the characters, the themes, uh, the stakes. And then look, if, if, if you want to use some PowerPoint slides to sort of help, you know, define a world or yeah. define who your characters are, or if it's based on a true story, you can have pictures of who these characters are, right? To sort of help at least give us insight into what you're talking about. So uh, I think that's always helpful, but I, I would focus yeah. on the messaging first, you know? And, and if, 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 if you feel like a few PowerPoint slides uh, can be helpful in, in, in conveying that message, then great, include that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and um, what, you really should be looking at your slides as giving tone, the feeling. Look at feeling here. Um, and I think do, do not try to express a lot of information on the slides. We will be getting that documentation along with these pitches. So do not repeat that. Um, and, you know, I always say I live in Southern California. So we're all about energy. You know, what's your energy here, right? So, but this translates in a pitch. And you're, you're at a disadvantage because of these. You may feel like, oh, great, I'm doing a video pitch. I don't have to get up in front of people because I'm nervous when I do that. I know, and that, that might feel like it's better, but actually you're at a disadvantage because when you're doing the video pitch, you don't have any idea of your energy. You have no idea of the kind of energy that you're giving off. That's why I would recommend you have other people watch and you're working as a team and even people who may not even know it, um, practice it. We, we need to feel that. We need to get the sense of you. So if you're going to be putting up slides of things, that's fine, but we need to see you. We certainly need to hear your voice, not just your, your actual voice, but the, the creative voice. And I think that's something that you, we don't, don't, get, don't get hidden, right? By don't let all the other things and the videos and all the complication things hide you. We need to see you and we need to feel kind of the what's going on with this project, your passion. So I just, I can't highlight it enough. Make sure you have other people that you're pitching to um, and that you're, you know, when you do the video, make sure it's, you know, um, you've got the great energy because that's something that, uh, like I said, when you're in a live room, you're gonna have the audience to get a sense of, like the audience will laugh or, you know, you'll, you'll hear them, you know, oh, that's terrible, you know, you, you feel them. It's, you, you don't have that advantage. So. Be, be sensitive of that. Um, make sure you give us a video that is just dynamic because of who you are, not necessarily because there'll be lots of cool slides and videos. Uh, uh, I can see the are more questions about how this video pitching should look like. Before Katarina reads those questions out loud, and before Adam and Josh answer, I would like to advise all of you, please visit the website of PitchUA. Just watch the list of the winners of the last year, the projects which were the winners of PitchUA 3. And then you should visit our YouTube channel, PitchUA in YouTube, and just visit all of the videos list just list back just a bit because there are lots of useful videos and you will find first the final pitchings 
those used to be the projects out of which we selected the winners. If you get a little rewind a bit back, you will have four big videos, which are very long, where we collected all of the video pitchings in each of the four topics, which used to be last year. Those were the first initial pitchings. In this way, you will be able to follow up how the winner project was moving through since the first initial pitching to the final one and finally became the winner. So you will be able to see the whole process of the best examples, how it can be done. And as for the format, you will see that there are different shapes and formats. Sometimes people were just sitting in front of the camera and were speaking. Um, somebody used PowerPoint, someone created the video. So there are any examples there and Katerina will read out those questions maybe Adam and Josh will add something to those recommendations yes I was planning to comment from my behalf because we are taking Adam's and Josh's time but I can see that those questions are so important for the people we've got the questions from Olena Makarenko uh, I will read it out loud but we are now at the technical stage so let's wait several minutes. Dear colleagues, I drive your attention to the fact that the majority of the answers for your questions are in the letters which we sent out to you, where there is a very detailed terms of reference. As for the structure of the presentation, it is very free. The format of your pitch is selected by you to make it as best as possible, as better as possible, according to the recommendations of the experts. But your presentations should include the presentation as it is, literally, that is the PowerPoint, the PDF slides, for instance. At least your presentation should include four slides, which are described in our guidelines. And those slides should be correspondent to the topics and also main topics. I will not read them out loud, not to take your time. Everything is written down in the instructions which you got at your emails. As for the presentation, this is the Zoom window, or should it be the screen, or should it be recorded, pre-recorded with the full height of the speaker? Well, it depends on your creative opportunities. Uh, the most, the usual format is Zoom, of course course, you're able to show your presentation, but do not forget, and if I'm not mistaken, Adam emphasized that, it is so important for the experts and whoever is watching your videos to see you. We'd like to see your emotions, and we would like to see your face, and what's your passion, which you're showing during the presentation of your project. As for the technical organization, well, Zoom is more convenient and it is a well-acknowledged format of video. So I would recommend you to use Zoom, but of course there are no restrictions. Let me read out some of the questions. What should be the format of the pitch, whether this is the teaser, the video presentation, or just the slide presentation? I've already answered that. You are the representatives of the project, so you are presenting it with the compulsory four slides. There can be more, whatever you choose, but do not forget that you're limited with your time. You will have five minutes only. Okay, as for the language, I can see there is the question about the language. The presentation should be done in Ukrainian, whether the English subtitles are compulsory. Well, we would like you to make your presentations in English, of course, as well, as all of the people who assess them, either English speaking or no English. This is the optimal option. But of course, you can make the presentation in Ukrainian if it is more convenient for you, if you'd like to speak and to look at the slides in Ukrainian. Though, do not forget that the information which you present will not be perceived that easily by our English speaking colleagues. So we do recommend you to provide additional subtitles in English. And maybe as the last resort, if you send the English a Ukrainian language video or with the audio track in Ukrainian, we will subtitle them ourselves. But in this case, do not forget that we will translate it with our own interpreters or translators. So we could lose some sense in the process if you would like to reveal something for our experts. Okay, as for the video presentations, okay, we've already answered those questions. What else? Five minutes? Yes, of course. Natalia Yakovlevo is asking whether you can show your teaser 
of two minutes into your video. Well, those are your five minutes. You can include the teaser, you can include the presentation and your speech. Just stick to the timing and do stick to the compulsory requirements according to the terms of reference, which we sent out Katja, to you. Katja, I want to make a point about the teaser. Um, it, I would, in some cases, some of the projects that we've chosen, the teasers really sold it. Um, so it, uh, your teaser can be incredibly important. Um, but to the other point, if, if you have to make a choice between seeing you and the teaser, we would probably want to see you. Um, I don't know if, are, would they be able to make the teaser available independent of the video pitch or is that not allowed? Uh, it's not allowed because uh, I think it will be like priority for this participant. Uh, Got it. So you're only in just five minutes. Just the five minutes. So so in that case, if if that's possible, if you really, really want to show your teaser uh, and it's long, uh, maybe show a short section of it. But um, there's definitely a balance. We we desperately want to see you uh, and hear you. So uh, don't just hide behind the teaser. Um, that said, teasers are great. And as I mentioned, there was one, I know one project in particular that we chose, the teaser was one of the most in, amazing sort of parts of it. It really helped sell the project. So we understand that sometimes that is a very useful tool. Okay, thanks, Adam. Uh, Going on with this topic, one more question. Can you create the voiceover into English? Not subtitles, but voiceover, because some of the people from the crew don't know English. Or there should be subtitles. Alex, tell me if I'm wrong. I would say that subtitles is the best, are the best, because voiceover is a bit worse. You should hear the original voice. Yes, you should make the presentation in Ukrainian, add the subtitles do not add the voiceover. We should have some adequate translation. Do not forget that your translation should be, well, finally proved, proofread. If you speak in English and somebody translated instead of you, do not forget that the translation can be lousy. So please make, be sure that the translation is of high quality. Very often we can see translations, even if we have the scripts, where the translation is just awful and they just distort the sense of what was written in the original. Please pay attention to that as well. Yes, more questions about the next stage of the competition even. Let me read all of that. Yes, we answered all of that. Okay, theoretically, that's it. Then the question to Josh and Adam from Olena Makarenko, the project Life Goes On. In our documentary stories, there will be four main stories of vets or uh, ex-combatants, but we are not ready to define who they will be. How can we present the stories in the best way possible in this case, if we haven't defined who of the ex-combatants will be chosen? Um, we had a project like this. Um, so I, I remember kind of what, what they did, I think. But I, if you don't actually have them, make them up. Give us... A, a fictional version of what you're looking for, right? Because we all, when you're looking for a documentary subject, we know you have an idea of it. That will be enough. We understand you're, you, you, at the end, if it may not exactly fit that, but we know exactly what you're looking for. So that would be my suggestion. I don't know if there's a problem with that, but that's kind of what, what we would do in, in other cases. Thank you, Adam. And I would like to, Ed, it's a very nice example with the stories of the ex-combatants and veterans. Do not forget <coughs> that there are lots of projects about ex-combatants. There are lots of them. And even at this PGA, there have been applications, numerous applications about veterans. So when you prepare your presentation, please think what, what new you can tell about the ex-combatants. It's so important to hear those stories, but do not forget that your viewers have seen lots of projects about ex-combatants already. 
And if they're interested in this topic, it doesn't mean that they will be ready to hear the same thing which they heard before for multiple times. Please drive your attention to what, what new you are going to tell, how your stories of ex-combatants will differ from lots of others which have already been made. And I really appeal to all of you, answer the question for yourselves, why the viewers of your project should spend this amount of hours in, of their life for viewing, not doing anything, but just watching your project. It is so important for you to understand the motivation of the viewers, of the audience. During the pitching, very often we have the question, why would people like to see that, in fact? Especially if your projects are made for some web platforms where the people would need to go to search for this project, then find time and watch it. If it's a story which is shown within a weekly news issue, then it's obvious how your audience will find your content. But if your content should be found first, you should explain what will motivate people not just to spend time for the watching, but just to find it at least, and then to watch it. This is a very important component of your presentations. <coughs> Thank you, Alex. One more question, maybe even two, but they are similar. They are of technical character as well, so I will be answering and you could add a bit. So after the video presentation, not all of the teams which are now at the second stage will be able to begin the doctoring consultations. No, in fact, all of them, because this stage is a complex stage. This pitching and the doctoring section, that is individual meetings with the experts one on one, is a whole holistic stage. During the first three years of the competition, we did it even during one day. First, the participants pitched in front of the jury, in front of the audience, uh, all of their projects, just to make people aware how they see those projects and to see the applications. And after that, we instantly conducted the consultations. Josh and Adam saw our previous semi-finalists for multiple times and provided recommendations and consultancies. So answering your question, you apply with the video presentation. And if you did not apply with it, then there is the question about mentorship and doctoring sessions. But if you applied the video presentations in a timely manner, then there will be some footage for the consultancies. Well, it seems to me I understand the motivation of the question, because people are thinking, after we apply with the video pitch, if there is no selection process, why should we get involved? Why are we worried if we are still staying for the doctoring? Well, because this is the first personal contact. I do apologize for interrupting you. Yes, I would like to explain that the aim of the doctoring session, that the expert knowing your project should begin the conversation, how this project can be improved. The doctoring session cannot begin with the words, okay, I did not understand anything from your presentation. Let us finally see into that. You will be short of time. Those pitchings, which you will record in the videos, is not just the first acquaintance with your project. This is the footage, this is the material which the expert will base upon during the doctoring workshop, because the experts will see them before the doctoring itself. The experts will have some time to see them and even to think what's wrong, what can be improved or changed, how it can be improved, what lacks there. So please have the proper attitude towards those pitches. Don't just think that after the pitches, no one will be eliminated. So you shouldn't do it in a proper manner. Uh, and if Eddie, I may, oh, I was going to add, we're, we're also planning to have another session, another workshop after you do, you do your pitches. 
um, where we're just going to be talking about mentoring and what to expect. So we'll have another follow up meeting like this one um, that'll go into more detail about that, just so you know. Um, we just want to focus on the pitching right now because that's first and foremost. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for that you added that. We will have one more workshop with a proper focus on to the uh, mentorship and doctoring. So adding to the previous question, how many teams will achieve the next stage? Well, this stage includes since the 18th of February, there will be the application process and we will have all of you there, all the 65 projects we're speaking about, if everything is done properly and in the timely manner, if you stick to all of the wishes and recommendations of the experts, if you send your video presentations um, in, in the timely manner and the experts won't have any global or categorical remarks why the project cannot move on. Theoretically, you can already be in the next stage of the final application process. Let's move on with the questions. Okay. Could you please tell whether the projects can be pitched by two producers or there should be only one producer who is presenting the project or maybe the author and the editor? Who could comment on that? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's your time, so you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, I, normally, it's best if it's one voice, because then it's uniformity. Uh, you don't have it all back and forth. But look, like if, if you're a writing team or you're a, a dynamic duo and it can kind of capture uh the the energy between you two and 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 how how uh you know how that relationship will work that's great i mean if that's part of your presentation and that's part of your passion and enthusiasm then capture that uh uh you know adam worked on a project uh that was pitched two years ago uh beekeepers and um crazy Crazy. crazy. I, yes. And they were crazy. And they, <laughs> they were, were crazy. crazy. <laughs> and, but, but, you know, what made that project stand out was the energy that these two creators brought to the project. Like, yeah. Oh, three. So, yeah. Um, they, uh, that helped to find it. So, and that was part of their whole shtick. So, you know, if it was one of them, then we would not never have gotten that. So I would say preferably one, but if, it, if, if, if you feel like this will capture the energy of the project, then, then do whatever you feel like is necessary. Look, you're, you're producers, you, you know, this is your chance to make video, right? So you got to make good video. We're your audience. Um, so, you know, who's, who's the best, you know, if you've got one person who's just really, Telegenic, right? That's your actor, right? That's how you do it. So um, it's okay if it's just one person. You don't have, we don't have to see everyone. We we just want to hear, we, we're really looking for is the passion and the voice. And if one person is particularly good at that, uh, we're okay with one. Okay. But we do appeal. Please watch the pitchings of the previous years and you will just see any options. You will understand what is working, what's not working, what's worth do, doing bet, in a better way. You will see what the issues were and which issues you could have, how they can be avoided. So please watch the last year pitchings of previous years and you will make lots of useful conclusions. I do promise, definitely. There was the question from Edward Georgadze, a similar question. So you just got the, the answer about the number of people for the pitching process. Okay, then what else? Do we have the question of a technical character about whether we understood it properly that Anna Maria Indrickson writes that you should send your video presentation up to 18th of February, according to the guideline. After the 18th, there will be the application process. You shouldn't send any additional documents before the 18th. 
you do not need to apply with anything additionally. Since the 18th, there will be the new form, which is a bit expanded. It is fuller and bigger than the previous one. So you will have an opportunity to get acquainted with it. You won't need to apply any documents before the doctoring or mentorship sessions. You will have the opportunity to prepare your documents and ideas. Then you're taking part in the mentors projects and doctoring uh, from the 1st till the 4th of March. And after that, according to the outcomes of doctoring sessions, you should take into account all the recommendations of the experts, and then you form the full package of the documents, you adapt and you improve your application according to the outcomes of the work with your expert. This is how it will be working. Okay, how many projects were applied well this year we got 196 applications if we speak about the full scale projects which we considered from a to z which were correspondent to the rules of the competition okay as for now there are no questions left just a moment Maybe you would like to ask your question personally. Would you use the function of raise your hand? I don't see any hands risen. Okay, one moment. Olga Zhurzhenko would like to ask the question. Let me include you into the panelists and you will be able to ask your question. Please approve the request. Okay, could you turn on your video and your sound, Olga? Do you hear me? Yes, we do. And the video? Just to see you. Well, I'm trying, so far I'm failing. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Perfect. We can see you and we can hear you. Okay, so this is the first surprise. In fact, I'm not Alga, I'm Anna Nesterova. Olga is our producer. <laughs> she, Olga just created this meeting for us. That is why I am in her profile. That's me and my colleague Volodymyr here. So we are co-authors. And you heard the question from me. But as nobody is asking any more questions, I will use this opportunity and I would like to ask you. I will explain what I meant when I was asking about the lesser or subplots or supporting characters. In fact, uh, I can see that uh, we can see some uh, trendy projects of Lost. Oh, this is us. Well, I'm a bit excited, so I can't remember any other TV shows which are popular now, but still I know that yeah. Lost Reference is still very That's a good answering, one. answering this question, right? So according to our plot, we are telling about a very important historical event, but it is taking place as a background. We have the protagonists, the couples, and we understand who the protagonists are and what's the plot, but if we narrow it down to our protagonists only and the context of the event, how it takes place, then it's a bit, it looks like a bit of too sad, it's a tragedy. People are in Gulag, in the concentration camp, that's too tragic, it's drama. And this is the story which we are telling. It was told about in the documentary format before. And the message was, oh my God, how this cursed Soviet authorities tortured poor people. But in fact, those people, yes, they were affected, but those people are strong in their spirit. And under the conditions, under those awful conditions, they were able to create happy lives. And the people who were close to them, we have some of the supporting characters who can be even comic, who can be even funny as the couples. Those are different edges of the story, which are important for our viewer. 
and it will make the story out of the tragedy or maybe even boring or sad drama, it, it will transform into almost entertaining content. Because uh, in this story, thanks to the supporting characters, it would be interesting to follow the story. Well, just for Adam, it's like your mesh, which you love it so much. Uh, because when we were watching for 11 years, the Vietnam War, this crazy expendables and tortured and uh, awful bodies of uh, perished people. But here we can see young doctors and 80% of the time watching MASH, we are smiling and laughing because we understand the depth and the tragedy of those events, but we perceive them positively. We don't have the wish to turn it off and never see it again. We understand the plot. And the ideas of the script writers, we let it through us just perfectly, and then we liked it. This is our task. We don't want to torture our audience. We would like to tell them an interesting story. But through this interesting story, we show them the relevant events, the relevance of what we are living now at. We show them the sources of the same information war, where it came from. But not like teachers, like mentors. But we are doing that like the people, when the people are observing the lives of other people, how they went through certain romantic story and made certain conclusions. That is so important. And besides our protagonists, the supporting characters, well, why I mentioned Lost so, uh, TV show, because they've got lots of important personalities whose story is supporting and making the motivation of the protagonists comprehensible during those events. I do apologize. Could you ask something precisely? It's not the doctoring. It's not the mentorship. I agree with the participants who are writing. It's already the pitching. Please, this is the Q&A session. Well, the question is the same. When we make an application, we speak about protagonists only. And our mentors told, forget about the supporting characters. When you can mention about them, but please tell us about the protagonists. But I understand when I focus upon the protagonists only, I am losing the overall atmosphere of the plot. It's interesting for me, how was Lost pitched? How This Is Us was pitched? Because they have six protagonists. Well, Lost was not applied for pitch UA, sorry. I, I'll just jump in real quick. It, it's not that we're saying don't pitch us about the supporting characters, right? But in Lost, we don't want to hear every 30, 40 character who takes place in, in, in that show, right? So my guess, you know, when you think of when you think of these uh, this video pitch that you have to put together, think of it as an elevator pitch, right? Like if you and I were in an elevator together and we're going up to the tenth floor, you have about a minute to pitch me your idea, right? So you have to think about it through that sort of prism in terms of how you're presenting your concept and who your characters are. So that alone should help you sort of filter in what's important, right? So like in the case of your show, you know, you should talk about here are my protagonists, here are my main characters, and then think about who you are your very most important supporting characters. So like in the case of This Is Us, you know, it's a story about a family, right? Like. We don't need to know anyone beyond the family for the initial pitch. It's it's about the siblings, the adopted, you know, brother, the mom, the dad, and that's it. So there, there really is only about six core characters at the heart of that show, right? And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can talk about that. But what we don't need <clears throat> is these intimate details about characters who aren't going to be the central focus of each episode, right? Like, I don't need to know who the flight attendant is who survived the crash in Lost. I don't need to know about the guy who's in the background uh, who's collecting coconuts for 
the you know for the survivors right so wait. <laughs> there was a plane crash and it lost wait did I you just spoil that show <laughs> yeah sorry spoiler alert um <laughs> but <laughs> you know it's it it's on you to sort of be your own filter and really focus on the most important elements of your show and if you can't if you can't do that then you then you need to take a step back and reassess the concept and the characters and be your own self editor and then move some stuff around get rid of some characters and then come back and 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 approach it that way um, I, I want to add to that. I mean, that that's right. And you already, in just what you explained, identified what you have to do. Um, look at what the challenge is, right? You said there's a very dark core of the story, but you don't want it to be that way. It's this other thing. So then find the comedy as well. Like, identify that. Um, every pitch is going to have its own problem. In, in its, Not just the problem of the characters, but like the problem of how to pitch. You're all going to have that 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 issue. Um, what's good about the time limit is it really forces you to bring it down, simplify, clarify, keep it really, really simple. But look at what what is the main central thing you're trying to get across. This is a dark, sad story, but there's a lot of humor in life, and it's all about that. Then you've got to you can explain it that way, but then give us the examples. Be very uh, specific about which examples you're going to use. Give us little bits of information. I, I always actually say in pitches, don't give too much information because sometimes that extra piece of information is what ruins your pitch. <laughs> it's it's the thing that will basically say, oh no, we sorry, we just don't want a monkey. You know, we just can't have monkeys. So we, the pitch was perfect, but with the monkey at the end, we can't do it. So don't don't put the monkey in, right? Just keep that really simple. And look at what the core is, right? That's what, to everyone listening, mm -hmm. what is the core of your idea? Go back, look, we, we, this is, when you go back, look at the other uh, presentation, we go into this detail, the elevator pitch, how to break that down. It's really about finding the core of your idea. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Good luck. Great. So we've got a video question from Stanislav Monachov. I'm joining, I'm trying to add you to the panelists, please support. Okay, turn on your camera and the sound. Can I begin now? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, hello, everybody. I have a question about the last part of you to what you said during the first part of this talk. Um, there was a thesis like know your audience. Our group has a conversation right now with some uh, broadcasting companies in Ukraine. And uh, these broadcasting companies, they have all they all have their own specifics, like uh, they are oriented to, to different target audiences and uh, uh, yeah, basically, my question is, uh, should we uh, brought, bring, uh, like, orient uh, the specific target audience during the pitching time, or should we uh, present our project in a broader way, you know, because uh, later on, there will be uh, further discussions with other people that may say that, okay, this doesn't suit us, we, we cannot work with that. So my question is, basically, that's it. Um, can you, so if I can understand you, you're saying, should you pitch your target audience, even though that may change? Can you explain that? I wasn't quite clear Yeah, exactly. Uh, we can pretend that we know our target audience right now. I mean, we have some pre-assumptions, but uh, this is a dynamic uh, part of uh, our project, and this may change uh, further. Well, I, Probably an example will be better. Our main character is a middle-aged man who is uh, a bit rough, uh, but uh, one of the main channels that we are talking to right now uh, doesn't uh, find it attractive for them. So they will most likely will ask to rewrite the main character further on during the development of the uh, series. So this may change uh, a bit or quite a bit, 
uh, in the future. And uh, during these pitches, uh, should we, uh, you know, choose just something and put it there, or should we say, okay, uh, we have uh, like more of a range of what we are doing instead of uh, particular variants? Um, do do I speak clearly enough? Yeah, no, you clarified it. Um, uh, I I would say basically, you know, you're going to have to make a decision about the character that you're pitching and who that is. Um, and again, I'm go back to the core. What are you really trying to convey? Those are really important things. Uh, Josh made the point earlier. Um, it was Mama. The story wasn't fully fleshed out. So that's okay. If things are going to change, we accept that. Um, really rely on what your intent is, what, what's the world, what are the other components around it? So even if that one thing will change, we still get what the gist is. We still get what the, the central thrust of, of your, your story and what your project is. I would say that's the most important piece, but um, I would be, you know, if this is your protagonist, you're going to need your protagonist to be sort of locked down. Um, so if, if that's going to change really radically, that that you just you you may need to really think about what that is and try to figure out that piece to it. Um, you know, before the pitch. Yeah, and, and so, I, would, I I I just would add. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you're sort of locked in with this channel that you're talking to, or you're just having preliminary conversations. But obviously, not yet, and that's part of the problem. No, right, right. So, so there are options. So me, you know, I, I, the fact that you don't have a deal in place right now, you should be the ones dictating the creative decisions, right? Um, and perhaps maybe this channel doesn't isn't the right fit for your concept, right? If you guys are like, oh, we have we have a middle aged man as our protagonist, and the channel is like, well, that person needs to be twenty years old. Maybe that channel isn't necessarily the best fit for your project, right? So yep. I, that that's that's the approach I would have. Now, again, if, if you were to say like, we're in partnership with the channel, we know where the distribution is gonna be on this, then that's gonna ultimately dictate your creative decisions, right? It's gonna dictate mm -hmm. your characters and it's also gonna dictate the tone of your show. So uh, in, in this case, given that that's not in place yet, I would say go with what sort of Adam was saying you know, go with sort of where you guys would ideally like your character to be like. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Stanislav. Okay, it seems to me there are no more questions in the chat and nobody is raising the hand. So if that's it, then maybe Adam, Josh, you would like to add anything? Some concluding words, Alex, the same concerns you. Um, Would you like to comment upon anything? Well, I just, I just want to say, uh, we, <clears throat> Josh and I, we really enjoy um, these pitches. I do, I'm pretty sure Josh does. We, um, and we're excited to see them. Um, so know that you have a really um, open and enthusiastic audience. We're, we're, we're on your side. We really, we, we want all of you to win <laughs> so that's that's our attitude so um but please um you know show us what you got really you know bring it all and and don't hide we want to see you i guess that's we'll just hit that again <laughs> yeah yeah no uh, i we're, we're we're your cheerleaders this is why we we do it uh we we do this every day and you know uh if we didn't enjoy it uh, we certainly would not be here. So, uh, you know, just know that we are here to support and, you know, obviously we, we want everyone to succeed and hopefully you guys find this advice and, and these videos helpful in, in putting yourselves in the best position possible. Um, so, uh, but yeah, as, as Adam said, you know, use, use these pitches as, as showcasing your best version and and practice practice ahead you know like don't don't pitch this for the first time if you're doing a live zoom or if you're doing a recording and only record it once practice with your friends get honest feedback if if someone says well it feels a little long it feels a little dense 
then make the make the necessary adjustments. You know, put put the ego aside, and 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 take the 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 constructive criticism as a good thing, and use that to your advantage to to make the best possible pitch. And do what that great comedian said, Albert Einstein. Keep it simple. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Alex. I would like to thank all of you that you've prepared such interesting applications. I congratulate everybody who's achieved this stage. Thank you that you gathered here today. I appeal for all of you, please use all of the available resources which can be found at PitchUA. They're numerous and they're mostly can be found at our website and YouTube channel. Please do not forget visiting them. You will find there lots of useful information which will help you make a more efficient and more interesting pitch. So I do wish you success in all of that from the whole team of TCA. Cool. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, Josh and Adam, that you've spent with us and our participants this morning of your Friday. Well, it's evening here already with our participants. So thank you that you've joined us as well. It seems to me it was a very cool and useful time. Your deadline is the 18th of February. I do remind you, we're waiting for your video presentations. Josh is really right. In comparison with the live uh, pitch, uh, you have an opportunity to record, pre-record this video. You don't have one attempt, you have multiple of them. You can really create a very nice and high quality video. This is not the one time live event, you have more attempts. So please, we wish you inspiration. Please try to do that as nice as possible. We are waiting for your video presentations. If you've got any additional questions, you've got our contacts at the website. We're open for communication and happy to help all of you. Have a nice evening and have the nice preparation to, to your pitches. Thank you, dear colleagues and the experts. See you. Good luck. Have a great weekend.